Summary of the Scarlet Ibis by James Hurst In rural North Carolina, the unknown narrator, who is called Brother, talks about the time of year when the scarlet ibis landed in the tree in front of his family's house after summer was over but before fall started. He says that both the memory of the event and the memory of his brother Doodle are so clear to him. Brother sees Doodle's birth in his mind. Brother is six years old at the time, and he is upset right away by Doodle. Doodle has a big head but a small body. His doctor doesn't think he will live more than a few days, but brother's Aunt Nicey thinks he will. Doodle's parents have a small box made for him, but he lives and is given the name William Armstrong by his parents. Brother says that he longs for a brother to run and play with, but his parents tell him that Doodle will never be able to do those things. Doodle starts to crawl when he is two years old. Brother names him Doodle because he moves backwards like a doodlebug. The boy's dad makes him a go-kart so that brother can play with him outside. Brother doesn't really care about the many rules that say what Doodle can and can't do. Brother takes Doodle to Old Woman's Swamp, where they have fun together, but Brother can be mean to Doodle sometimes. Brother takes Doodle up to the loft of the barn to show him the box that his parents made for him. He won't let Doodle leave until he touches it. This is what Doodle does. He screams in fear and begs Brother not to leave him as he lifts him down the stairs. Brother chooses to teach Doodle how to walk when he is five years old because he feels bad having an older brother who can't. Brother tries to teach Doodle every day that summer, even though he doesn't understand at first why he needs to. Doodle keeps falling down because he can't stand up, but he learns to walk after a lot of hard work. They show it to their parents and Aunt Nicey, who are thrilled. Brother now thinks he can teach Doodle anything, so he starts a program to help him grow. He teaches Doodle how to run, swim, climb trees, and fight. They work on it all spring and summer. Doodle gets better, but Brother is still worried that he won't be able to keep up with the other boys at school. Doodle falls over and starts to cry at the end of a very hard day. The family sees a scarlet ibis in a tree in their yard a few days before school starts. According to their bird book, the ibis is not from that area and must have been blown there by a storm. The ibis tries to fly all of a sudden, but its wings don't work together, and it crashes to the ground and dies. The ibis's death makes Doodle very sad, and he lays it to rest in a somber way. When the boys are done burying the ibis, they go outside to swim, but Doodle is too tired to swim, so brother makes him row instead. Soon, it looks like a storm is coming. Doodle is too tired to keep going, so the boys start to head back to their house. As it starts to rain hard, Brother gets angry at Doodle for failing and starts running as fast as he can away from Doodle, but Doodle can't keep up. Brother stops and waits for Doodle for a while, but Doodle doesn't show up. When Brother comes back, he sees Doodle lying on the ground, lifeless and bleeding from the mouth. Brother is shown at the end of the story protecting Doodle's dead body from the rain like his own fallen scarlet ibis. About the author James Hurst grew up in North Carolina on a farm near the coast. Before going to North Carolina State College to study chemical engineering, he went to Booker T. Washington High School in Atlanta, Georgia. After that, he joined the U.S. Army and served there during World War II. He studied singing and acting at the Juilliard School of Music in New York after the war. He then went to Italy to study opera further. After three years, he went back to New York to start a job as a banker that would last for 34 years. His free time was spent writing short stories and a play while he worked at Chase Manhattan Bank. Some of his stories were published in smaller literary journals, but none got nearly as much attention as The Scarlet Ibis, which won the Atlantic First Award the year it came out in 1960. Because of this, it is now a standard in collections of short stories. Hearst died in North Carolina. He was 91 years old. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.